was a girl, a small girl, which uh, had this tragic end there in the crater lake of Messel 47 million years ago. Yeah. She's in a developmental phase that looks very much like a six-year-old human if in comparison. And I'm so lucky that I have a daughter that's five years old and she's starting to shed her teeth just now. So, so uh, we decided after some discussion to name the fossil, to name this, uh, this wonderful little primate, Ida, because that's the name of my daughter. So Jörn now has two Edas in his life, one five years old and one 47 million. At this point in the investigation, they've gathered so much information that it's possible to fully reconstruct her ancient skeleton. Her 47 million year old remains can be brought to life in a 21st century virtual world. Laser scanners combined with the computerized tomography produce a digital code of her body, which once processed creates an accurate 3D model. We are able, using these tools, to see Ida as never before. Ida is a warm-blooded creature covered in thick fur. She was just under a meter long, including her tail, which she used for balance as she scampered on all fours through the rainforest canopy. Her opposable thumbs and toes gripped the branches. Ida was probably active at night. Like us, her two large forward-facing eyes gave her excellent stereoscopic vision. The team's extensive analysis combined with X-rays and CT scans have brought them a long way in understanding Ida. The investigation is, however, far from over. There are still many questions to answer. Most importantly, how significant is she to our understanding of our evolution? Does she belong on the evolutionary branch that leads to us? The Eocene period in which she lived was a crucial time in the history of life. Without the developments that happened, we would not exist now. At some point during this new dawn, the primates split into two major groups. The prosimians, the non-human branch, which still survive, mainly as modern lemurs. The other branch, the anthropoids, developed into monkeys, apes, <laughs> and ultimately us, humans. Well, the advantage of having a skeleton this complete is hopefully it will let us make the connection to what came later. In a sense, studying primate evolution is all about looking at the diversity living today and tracing that back through time. We're interested here to see how apes and monkeys trace back, how lemurs trace back, and which of these, or all of them, can we find in the Eocene. But what is Ida? Is she our ancestor, or is she on the non-human line, a lemur? Any partial primate remains discovered at Messel so far have been described as lemurs. The first guess, of course, because of the other specimens that's found from the Messel locality, is to say that, okay, this is a primitive lemur. 
Most lemurs are the size of monkeys and have similar habits and lifestyles, but they are an evolutionary side branch. They've hardly changed fundamentally in 47 million years. If Ida is closely related to modern lemurs, then she cannot be a human ancestor. It's a critical stage of the investigation. It's really important to uh, compare this fossil to living lemurs, because living lemurs have many uh, not-so-advanced traits. And a lot of the traits we see in lemurs today is the same things that we should look for in the Eocene, when all primates were really primitive. Dental expert Dr. Holly Smith is at Duke Lima Center in North Carolina. This is the world's largest research center for the non-human line of primates. And here they have a great variety of them, including tarsiers, loris, and lemurs. Is there one that is particularly similar to Ida? The fossil primate isn't exactly like anything living. And one of the questions is, is it, is it general enough to have been a possible ancestor for the higher primates, the apes and monkeys, and perhaps these animals too? Or was it already specially off on the line to lemurs? But if you want to study one of these creatures, there's a problem getting it to keep still. Fortunately, this loris is being examined under sedation by the center's vet. And we're doing a physical exam, his annual physical exam, under sedation. By having a really close look at this animal, we can see characteristics that proves it is not our close relative. Most of their, their toes have toenails like we would have, but this second digit has a, a long grooming claw. All lower primates have such a grooming claw on the hind foot. They can use that for grooming their fur, and you can see in primates, have got a really lush, thick coat of fur, and keeping that in uh, condition is important. The vet continues by checking this creature's teeth, Holly's particular expertise. He reveals another important characteristic that places it on the non-human branch of evolution. So, he has the upper incisors here, the canines, and then on the bottom, his incisors and canines form this tooth comb. These animals have unusual front teeth in their lower jaw. Where we and apes and monkeys have separate front teeth, these creatures have a tooth comb. Some of the lemurs specialization used for getting food, but it's it's also used for grooming fur and grooming each other. The big question for Jörn and the team is, does Ida belong with them or with us? Does she have the grooming claw and a tooth comb? So looking at this toe here, there's certainly, it's just as wide as the others. There's not a pointy toe tip uh, like you expect in lemurs to see when there's a toilet claw present. There's nothing like this here. This is also nail bearing. Uh, one of the other main uh, lemur traits is of course a tooth comb. And uh, we would expect this of course in the front of the snout. And there's no tooth comb here at all. There's nothing like that uh, in this specimen. Ida's skeleton is over 95